Okay, this is going to be a lengthy video. It's going to be in depth, and it's going to be just me talking, sitting here on a log. And basically, some of you were asking, like, what is a power hammer? Why make one? Um, for instance, how does it actually really work? And to be honest, I actually thought by making my last video, I already taught you how it actually works by just building the thing. I thought a, a, a video or picture talks or speaks a thousand words, but obviously not. And that's fair enough because we're not all technically minded. And I just wanted to make a quick video, well, not that quick, and uh, addressing all those kind of things. So basically, um, if you know everything there is to know about power hammers, then this video is going to be not for you. So thanks for watching, and I, I should see you hopefully in the next one. Okay, so. What is a power hammer? Well, a power hammer is a mechanical device that will transfer energy, whether it's through me going like this or a motor doing the same thing, uh, into a hitting object that is placed above an anvil to mimic um, our kind of whacking it with a hammer, if that makes any sense. Now, there's no point, right? Especially with a hand driven one to expend either more energy than I would by whacking it or the same amount of energy as if I was just whacking it by hand. You know, by spending the same amount of energy there was a lot of waste of energy even building this thing. Now luckily that's not the case. So um, I estimate now actually looking at YouTube looking at the actual video itself in the foot in the you know here down here on the on the left and your right here there's a, a setting where you can set the speed. So if I'm talking too slow for your liking, you can actually speed me up and all of a sudden I'm just gonna talk really really fast and that might give you a headache. But it can also slow it really down. <laughs> and basically we can see how fast this thing can hit per second, and I actually, it was actually five times per second, this, and this is at a leisurely pace. So I can hit about five times a second, which is really cool. So, first of all, this is a, a gearing down ratio. What that means is, when I put this little wheel, which is got, it's a sprocket, it's got little teeth, and this chain fits on top of that, and if I were to put these little teeth into these little teeth, and I'm turning this, this will have, uh, with, with one revolution, will turn this four times. So by actually slowly turning this, this wheel is turning four times as fast. So that's uh, energy transfer. It, but it means I need more torque to actually get this started, but once this is going, it's actually relatively easy to maintain that speed. Uh, really easily and that's why I can get so many whacks out of that by actually very simply just moving this so that's a huge advantage it's uh, changing the energy ratio so I can actually do quite a lot of work here without having to do a lot of work here now if you have a this is a really important point actually if you have a hammer that weighs five pounds, okay? This one weighs five pounds. Now, this, all this stuff here weighs more, and we won't get into that. But let's just say this whole contraption weighs, no, let's just say five kilos, because that's actually roughly what it weighs. Now, if it weighs five kilos, and I'm hitting this five times, no, let's say 10 times per, per second, then it would be the same as if I had a 10 kg hammer, including all the arms, and hitting it only five times per second. So that's what it means when you have two forces. You have a speed force, the amount of times you can actually hit the thing with the weight that you have, versus the amount of weight that you have with the amount of times you can actually hit it. So that ratio is really important because that can help you design the power hammer and you can say, well, is my power hammer a little bit flimsy, which this one is, so I need to design this in a way that it's more reliant on speed than it is on weight, okay? Now, I want to get the weight up as much as this can handle so that I can also move more metal and then also more speed, uh, the right amount of speed as well. Okay, so I could actually make these longer, these a bit longer, and then when I'm pedaling, I'm even pedaling slower or faster, and this will even go faster if I wanted to, but I'm really happy with the amount this thing is doing. Let me just show you once more 
if you haven't seen the other video. Now I don't want to do that too much because this is a hardened piece of hammerhead and this is a hard piece of S S7 or something steel, very hard stuff. And this might shatter and explode and break eventually. Uh, if I were to do this, this could be potentially dangerous. Now the force of that, if I added some more springs, I can also add weight. And I mentioned that in the last video as well. Now, what is this actually doing? What I'm going to have to do now, I'm going to pause the video because I'm going to have to move the camera and I'm going to have to show you the essential <coughs> part of this. Actually, before we get into that, let me just bear with me. Actually, what we're going to talk about first is the mechanics of this. And then we'll get into the really important part, which is the spring and the cam as well. And pretty much, pretty much all power hammers work on these two principles. And once I've explained that to you, you can literally build any kind of power hammer you want, so you understand it. Now, because this was a flimsy construction, I had to make this somehow strong. So what I've opted for is a, a bit of, I think it's about a one inch thick piece of rebar. It was free, flying around the place, so I grabbed that. Then we have here um, some Jubilee clips here. We have this gadget here, which is just a, I don't know, like a, a slide arm, maybe we could call it. So I greased it and this arm can walk, uh, work in between there. That kind of stiffens this whole thing up a bit. We have two Jubilee clips here. There was a hole where the valve uh, goes in. And I, I made that bigger, and then I rested this um, rebar on top of, in the middle, on top of that axle. Now I added also two Jubilee clips. So there's six Jubilee clips holding everything together. Now having set it up like this is really important because this, this small point there would have not been strong enough. Now we've, we've created, turning this small axle into a giant axle, if you want to think about it in that way. And this is now holding, because it's held down here and there, it's actually structurally way stronger and more sound. Um, this thing was shaking this way too much, it's not anymore. But it was like crazy, until I added this, and I actually had it, when I had it on top of there, that was just not working, like I had in my drawing originally. Um, so those are the kind of things, that you have to, when you have like small pieces like this, you have to figure out ways of making it stronger. Like one, one option would have definitely been make a plan. Cut it down here, cut it down there, and somehow weld it closer together because then you wouldn't have such a wide gap between the hammerhead and the axle. That's of course flimsy, but this is never gonna bend. This is actually really strong now and sound. I'm pretty happy and confident with it. Okay, so let's get you a little bit closer and we'll take a look at the cam. All right, so we have the cam here now, and the cam is basically, um, there's two types of cams, there's many actually types of cam, but two types of cams that are used in the power hammer. One is a snail cam and one is an eccentric cam. We're using an eccentric cam, and basically, it really pays off at the end of this video if you just look at animation eccentric cam and animation uh, snail cam and then you will see an animation of how it really works and trust me after that you will understand it straight away but just for for argument's sake what you have here is I mentioned before that a snail cam which is like a, a round piece like this but it has this extra it looks like a snail casing it's hard to I'll put a drawing of it now into the video I want to talk a little bit more in detail about this. So what happens is, is that as you're turning the snail cam, at some point the arm will not go any further up. It's reached its top momentum and then it will all of a sudden drop. This will, a snail cam will always give you a sudden drop and these are great for like really heavy power hammers and that's why I mentioned all that stuff earlier about, you know, speed versus weight. Now, the other thing that you have is then, um, so that's just the snail cam. It cannot do a dropping force, it only has a lifting force. And then the gravity of the hammer is what drops it. And so you're relying on really heavy hammers to move your metal. Now, when you have a camshaft, all it basically is, I don't know if you can see it there, actually, when I move this a little bit, can you see that in here, I've welded a pipe onto the axle there, 
okay? So it's a round pipe and it's got these two shoes on above it and below it and then I have welded these two these we have these two bars on either side but there's a big enough gap for the axle to travel up and down in um, so we've done that in order for there to be let me just move it slowly so you can actually see it can you see that look at that I'm a bit sniffly today I have a cold so but what I also did is I've because there's only two mil of play between here and here and the actual width of this pipe this is a quite a thick pipe by the way um, I needed a little bit of play it means that I had to cut out a rounded area here otherwise I would have gotten stuck on this um, and that's now at its full height now if I go down slowly then gravity is going to push this down okay let me just show that I'm just going to move very slowly okay yeah okay so there's no energy transfer barely any on the hammerhead let me just zoom you out again now if I go faster that was really slow by the way it looked fast what will happen now is it's lifting this, but also when it gets to this point, it's pushing it down. Okay, see that? That was so slow. Let me just do it a little bit faster so you can actually appreciate it. Okay, you see that? I don't do it too long. Remember, I'm hitting only, I'm hitting hard metal on hard metal. So it's lifting, this pipe is now, it's off center to the axle, welded on top of the axle. So it's pushing this contraption here up and down at the same time within like five times per second so that's fast enough for the weight of it to make not that much of a difference it's more like the lifting force and the dropping force and of course the dropping force of the weight of the arm as well which is giving me a lot of whack <laughs> oh that makes sense okay now let me just move you very gently over here and basically I just wanted to show you the spring, because from here you could probably get a good angle. There we go, let's get rid of some of that light there from the window. Now the spring is important just basically because if I were to put a piece of metal in here and there was no spring in there, well now that I've explained to you how the cam works, this eccentric cam, as I'm pushing it down, it probably would just break after some time down here, somewhere where the weakest point is because there's no give whatsoever. But having these springs in there as well, I mean, if you can see, oh man, I just don't want to do this too much. I'm doing it gently, I'm doing it gently. Oh, just... See those springs actually moving, and that's giving a up, it's allowing the force when it's going up to actually. Um, some of that force travels up into the springs but then as it's going down again it actually releases that as well so it's adding to the uh, the whack of the hammer but it's also preventing any kind of I don't know big explosions in the whole thing so yeah so I hope I explained now why what how how to build this thing um, one last thing I want to mention is now where are you? It's basically in the shot there now, yes. Okay. So one last thing that I want to mention as well is that definitely do not use a motorcycle uh, starter motor, like I mentioned in the last video. And I did write it in into the pinned up the comment just to mention that. Because they burn out. I did some routing, I looked up a load of videos, lots of different things. And motorcycle starters, uh, starter motors actually burn out really quickly. So after like 20, 30, 40 seconds maybe, and if you keep using them, they will burn out pretty quickly. A car starter motor doesn't seem to have that problem, but why take any risks? Use a small uh, motor, like even a tight, like something like that big would be way too, like really strong enough to, to move this, okay? Like what I'm thinking of, I might even at some stage, I don't know, just maybe for the for the fun, I might actually weld another one of these sprockets on here 
and then attach somehow maybe a small starter motor here, a small motor. No, do you know what I have? I have one of those, maybe I even, I can't promise anything yet, and I might make a video out of it, but I might, uh, you know those, those soup, big industrial soup plungers? I'm, I probably can get a, an old one of those, and I might use a motor on that. But literally, a small motor like that, about that long, and that round, that, that size, is plenty strong to move this. If you wanted a, a big power hammer, you're going to have to start sizing up a bigger motor. Um, don't use petrol uh, motors, they're very hard to work with, um, unless you really uh, like know what you're doing and you're a mechanic. I wouldn't trust myself, I know a little bit about me mechanics, but I, I wouldn't trust myself to <laughs> use one of them. Now electric motor is fine, and they, they are very strong. Like. And you can also change the, uh, what you call it, um, there's like a dimming switch, you know, like you have a lights, you can actually change the speed of the motor. So you, that's also really a benefit for that, you don't have all the gearing as you would do with a, like, with a petrol motor and you wouldn't waste so much petrol, you would just use electricity. Now that's it, I hope that concludes the video for you, that you really understand how this all works and the mystery of it all is taken out of it because how do we know these things until somebody actually explains it to us or just through a lot of trial and error, messing around and stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed the video, do, uh, yeah, do like it up, it helps me a bunch and other than that, hope to see you in the next one too.